Welcome back to the Ultimate Paul Pairs Cup. Mark Brazier and Harriet Haynes still seeking their first points of the evening. Jamie Burnett and Scott Gillespie still alive, just in the tournament. They must win this match. And if they do that, it keeps Phil Harrison and Cameron Tolly honest. They must therefore get a result in their final match of the night against Matt Cook and Scott Yardley. They'll have that anyway, because if Matt Cook and Scott Yardley beat them, then they'll be all squared in a six red shootout. Oh, you're, of course, you're absolutely correct. So there's still a potential for three groups to end up going yeah. through. You know what? You're absolutely right. And your maths is always <laughs> terrible on this show. <laughs> Never thought I'd see the day you were keeping us honest. Mark's hit a few cut breaks tonight where he's caught that front ball. This time he catches it flush. There's still not a huge amount of power there, and therefore they don't open up as much as we saw with Cam Tolly. I think that's been a little bit of the issue for, for Mark and Harriet tonight. It's, it always feels like they've had actually quite a lot to do. They've not had a, they've not had like an easy finish where you feel like you can almost get your eye in and sort of get a bit of momentum going. Even that first shot for Harriet there is tough. Yeah, the layout actually was very good there. If Harriet makes the first shot, then you can sort of pick that one apart. But it was an awkward first shot. And it is just tough when you, you can't get into the night. You can't get a rhythm going. And it's hard to get a rhythm going in pairs as well. It can be tough out there. Yeah, absolutely. Scott just having a little bit of a whisper to each other there. And execute the first shot nicely. Transition down to the bottom of the table. We'll come here. Wobbles stays up. I think they're playing a little cannon there as well. Missed the cannon, missed the pot. Hasn't left anything nice on here for Mark and Harriet. So the conversation begins. Well, I think Mark can actually get through to the red to right centre. So actually there's more on here than I first thought. There's actually one, one red that's really awkward and one that you can get to. Two together at the bottom. The left hand one obviously goes. If you get on that one, then it opens up the other one. At some point, you need an angle to develop the bad ball, which you could do now. But if you do it now, you, you're knocking the yellow down the table into the other two. So you probably want to avoid it at this point. Oh. Harriet has played into it, but she plays into it from underneath. So it's sending it up. You were never going to send the yellow into the two reds. The problem going underneath it is landing on the next ball wasn't guaranteed. Foul's being called. I'm assuming Mark feathered the red. Let's have another look. Yeah, nothing obvious on the replay there, other than you could tell he just sort of slipped off his hand just a fraction, but you couldn't tell whether it hit the, the red or not, but oh, it's right on hand to get that one right. this point this finish becomes very easy just drop that cue ball on a dime and pop the rest of your yellows Shot. That's not, not a all. Nudge at all. Another double attempt for the Scots. And no bueno. 
And it's very similar to the one that Jamie missed in the previous match. Played it at not much more than pocket weight. And then it just throws that little bit wider when you do that. And both Jamie and Scott miss their doubles on the wide. Well, I can't believe they've got this shot. You figure you missed that double, it's end of frame, but they're going to end up in winning it. Oh, cue ball was almost in off. Oh. Well, they almost fudged it up, but got there in the end. Well, yeah, they can laugh about it now. That wasn't the clean kill they wanted it to be, but frame is on the board. Remember, they are still very much alive tonight. Harriet and Mark, they can no longer go through. Yeah, that was a bit of a flaky finish, but that should give them a boost. Let's be back on the break to keep things back on topic. Eight ball. Oh, that was almost clipped in there. It's going to be dry. And do you know what? If Harriet has a shot here, I'd make this one of the few times she'll have come to the table with what's a real bona fide chance. Yeah, not it's not bad. It's the first shot's awkward. Uh, the two red, two yellows together make yellows awkward for me. I think reds are the the option here. I'm assuming the red on the break line does pass to the top left, but the guarantee of position here isn't on. Yeah, you almost play the red to get your colour set, and then you've got a good, well, a tough shot to play at the top of the table. It's like the long red. Get this right, you can get into your work. Guaranteed. Oh, good shot. Just let that cue ball drift, though. I think she knew that she couldn't hold on the red, to be honest, and she let it drift to take something down the table. The two at the top connect together, so you can come back for those. Just need one good pot and just get hold of this cue ball and then really run through this finish. Well, there you go. Interesting to see whether she chooses to leave a red down the table here. It's definitely an argument for doing that, isn't it? Yeah. I'd have been tempted, though, if you're going to, to be the one that Harriet's just played. Could have just dropped the other one in the centre. There's a little bit of angle on it, but if you just drop it in, then leave the one she's just played. But the one that she's just nudged isn't terrible to leave down the table either. Left herself loads of angles to come down. Oh, that's not a kind nudge. Sarcastic tap of the table, wanted to avoid that red. And now a tough shot to play. Is there any shot to play? I'm trying to find it getting going towards a, a pocket somewhere. Is she looking at right middle here, or two cushions? Not sure that's on. Up. That's what it she gave a go at. Looked it's like it was on in the end. A terrible leave, I don't think. I think Scott's got a great first shot here. Easy enough safety, though. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Just brush off the yellow, make sure you hit the cushion. And if Harriet makes it off one or two cushions, then so be it. But it's hard from if he does leave the cue ball on the left-hand side to get it going towards a pocket. That's not the best shot he's played. And the reason I'm saying that, uh, the two yellows at the top now are slightly awkward together. I thought he was going to brush off them so that everything stays open in the bottom half of the table. I don't know whether the plan was to play the yellow he played off the yellow nearest the left-hand side just to bump them both into play. But the one on the left-hand side near the centre pocket looks enough on anyway. Why well, has he left the one cushion off the top of the table? 
I can get a good hit here, so go close. I couldn't. Not sure that was on. I think she has to be really close to the eight ball there. Safety pays off. Has got Gillespie, and now he can get to work. As the Scots still trying to make a ripple in tonight's ultimate pool, pairs cup group one. Can't make his mind up. And the shot he played previously, where he put those two yellows together, is part of the reason why he can't make his mind up. If he'd put those yellow, the yellow he played on this previous shot in the middle of the table or in the open, he'd be playing this one all day long, and it would be really, really simple from here. I still expect him to get out and get out comfortably, but it's just half a shot he's got to consider. Just gone a little bit too far at the table. Want to be straight in on the right hand, one of those two yellows together. Yeah, and that's why there's another safety. Close, you know. It was tracking. That was really close. Always a risk when you leave a one cushion of a good hit, because crazy stuff can happen. Let's have a watch on this replay here. Well, it might have been a little bit narrow, but it, I'd say why it was close. Good leave, though. Yeah, great leave. Big shot required here. And he's not made it. I think Harry can see this red. Getting it towards a pocket's tough, though. Oh, Scott Gillespie snickers to himself. He won't be laughing if Harriet can get this in. Oh, what a shot! That is an absolute stunner from Harriet Haynes. Bang! What an out. That's incredible. Great shot from Harriet. But you have to say, Scott Gillespie has brought this on himself. He allowed Harriet to have this opportunity by not putting this frame away. And boy, did she grab it. What a finish. Absolute belter. Just felt like Scott Gillespie really made a, a bit of a dog's dinner of that frame. Just yeah. messed about with it too much. Never really was really decisive. It, we, we said you keep giving quality ball players a shot of just hitting a ball, and stuff can just happen. Well, I made the point when he played his first safety shot. He put two yellows awkward rather than everything being in the open, and that meant he couldn't clear up with his first opportunity. And you, then you're giving Harriet some chances to do something out of a snooker and. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it seems like a nothing shot when I mentioned it. People are probably saying, oh, what, why are you saying that? It's probably not going to make any difference. And, yeah, nine times out of ten it doesn't. But the one that it does really hurts you. Yeah, agreed. You have to say that. It was an absolute jaffer from Harriet. Oh, belter. Absolute cracker. Chris Potts here from Jamie Burnett. Just needs to watch his work here, though. I think he's okay. I think if he just drops the one in right centre, the cue will just drift past the eight ball, and then you've got the red top left, and just work your way around. Yeah, 
it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. You can take right center and then go top left if you prefer. I mean, it, it's probably the right way. Top right is the better ball for the eight ball with the eight ball left center, but it goes in so many pockets. It, it's just don't try, you don't need to get too good on this one. That's it, just get back somewhere there. Doesn't matter if you're hitting the yellow or not. And he wasn't. Simple eight ball. And after eight comes the frame. Two one. Bennett and Gillespie back in the leads. Good visit that, because whilst we were enjoying the shot that Harriet just played, you know, it made a match here, made it one one rather than two nil. But Obviously, there's low, no pressure on Harriet and Mark out there because they can no longer qualify, but Jamie and Scott still have a very real chance of finding themselves in a six-thread shootout tonight. And, you know, if they'd not got the win in this match, they'd be kicking themselves from the position they were in. So that was a very important visit to the table for Jamie. Am I right in thinking, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, which I, I may well be, I accept the, the maths is never the strong point on this show. Am I right in thinking that if... Scott and Jamie were to win this match. The only way they can qualify is be a three-way six red shootout. Yeah, I believe that's correct. It relies on Matt and Scott beating Phil and Camp. Three and they're teams all, all on two, two wins, wins and a yeah. loss. Exactly that. Oh, yes, please, if that's the case. Well, not the best of breaks, this one. But not the best of leaves, either. I'm not sure there's an opening shot. Scott's frame this one on a 15 second shot clock. Harry and Mark have to keep their wits about each other. Oh, that's a great shot. Plays it off the reds. Yellows all of a sudden look available. They do. Every yellow's got a pocket. Okay, there's one by the red in the middle of the table that depends on which pocket that goes into. Oh, that's a complete miscue from Mark. Yeah, second time he's jumped the cue ball. Just trying to do a little bit too much with it. Now, I half thought that Harriet might try and play that off the, the red and yellow together. It would have been, wouldn't have been that tricky a shot. Go into it now, though. But the plan. Yeah, they can go into it now. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Really good. It's the cleaner way of playing it than the way I was suggesting, but required an excellent pop from Mark, which he got. Now, the one on the line is slightly awkward. You need a good angle here. I think it's one of those, except what you've got. If you try and get on the yellow in the same pocket, you could end up in a mess. Except the middle or the corner. The top corner, that is. Yeah, excellent choice. Yeah, I always feel like these are makeable when you're close to your work. Just to set up a decider. That's a great. This is their best visit to the table in the night. Mark Brazier and Harriet Haynes. Super finish. Well done. Very, very good. All set up by a, a brilliant opening shot from Double H, who's starting to hit her strides. Last two times she's been at the table. Some great work from the 2022 Women's Series number one. Yeah, big, big weekend ahead for Harriet. She looks to get herself back to the top of the rankings, get back in amongst the trophies in the Women's Series. And as always, trying to make inroads on the Pro Series. She's had a couple of great results this year already. Notable win last weekend against the, uh, the reigning world champion, Ronan McCarthy. Oh, hello. Oh, this might not be good viewing. If you've got Gillespie and Jamie Burnett. Two minutes 50. And Harriet Haynes has a chance. Yellows aren't great here, though. They look good, but you've got one in the top half of the table that's away from everything else and is really awkward. But because of the match situation and, and time on the clock, 
She might be able to leave that late and just track up for a double and play it in such a way that she can't lose the frame off it. No, she's going to try and move it now. Okay, Not quite. Was, it wasn't quite the natural to try and get there. Had to try and force it, and that then is hard to judge. The ones at the bottom of the table here actually knit together quite nicely. It's just the one at the top of the table. I feel like she... Depends how straight she is on the other one, but I was feeling like she should have gone bottom right there. And then the one she's just played, because this one isn't as easy to connect to the other one. Yeah, that, that wasn't as easy as going the other way around, but it, she may have had a shade too much angle to be able to play the way I was suggesting. So maybe Burnett and Gillespie will get a shot to win the match. Tried the cross double. Keeble got in the way, the double kiss comes in, and Jamie Burnett can sweep in. Doesn't have to fly here exactly, does the Scotsman. Yeah, that was a beautiful shot. Yeah, really nice. Threads the needle. Yeah, very nice. Scott Gillespie just says to him, that's the benefit, isn't it, of having your teammate out there. We've seen Jamie sort of struggle to get to grips with the 15-second shot clock, and you can see there he's almost rushing. The call comes in from Scott Gillespie. Plenty of time, mate. Just relax. And look at the difference it makes. Yeah, instead of you can't have that in individual competition. It's, it's it's banned. You can't actually do it. Yeah, instead of rushing and, and sort of just getting in the top half of the table, it gave him the extra few seconds just to go. Okay, where am I getting to? And now he's an ability that he can run the clock down as well. Yeah, and he has the extension too. So, won't worry about using all of this. It just takes out the clearance. So, they know the only way they can lose the match now is via golden break or duck, and it is their break next. So this is all but for the match. A 3-2 lead. And it runs to 12 seconds left on the clock. Time for one last break. And as long as you don't foul off this break, it should be the match. And uh, Scott Gillespie's enjoying his role, I think, of coach. I think him and Andy Sullivan are enjoying <laughs> giving Jamie some pelters out there. Well, he's done the line share of the work in this match. He made the break clearance to get them back in front, and then the counter clearance to go back in front once again. Keep the cue ball on the table, and you win the match. Yeah, took everything off that one. No mistakes. And that will do it. So, Jamie Burnett and Scott Gillespie stay alive. A win for Matt Cook and Scott Yardley, and it's three-way, six-red shootout time, and it will involve the Scots.